and welcome back fourth and long fans it's your footy correspondent coach donnie has here back and we have it our grand final review just a little bit delayed we had to be sure that we had a nice little panel here unfortunately i had a little bit of a bigger panel but tons of things happen during this time of year so we will go with two lovely ladies hopping on on the podcast first of all i gotta say this Miss Fiona Lamb, so good to have you on the podcast. I know a lot of things have been going on for you personally. It is great to see you. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Thank you, Donnie. It's great to be here. And I'd like to uh, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that I'm coming to you from the Camaragal of the Eora Nation. I'm actually in my childhood home, uh, staying with my mum this Easter weekend. Um, so it's really nice to be joining you. And it's really nice to be back in my in my childhood bedroom. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, I'm doing really well. I'm wearing a, my giant's cap to cover up my very bald head. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I'm just progressing with my treatment and it, it has its ups and downs, of course, but um, you know, um, uh, this ship's still sailing in the right direction. <laughs> Good. Well, like like I've told many of the coat hanger ladies that I've talked to this week, my thoughts have been with you. I am behind you. I try to check up with you at least once a week to try to see how you are doing. So please keep me updated on how you are going. And also joining us, she was also on our grand final preview, our huge Demons fans. So unfortunately, this podcast may be a little bit fun for her to talk to. And that is Miss Allie Collett. Allie, how are you doing have 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 you been able to get over what it was a very tough loss by your beloved D's? Hey, thank you for having me. Yes, that was not a fun afternoon, but I've had my cries. I've had my time to process and yeah, looking forward to next year already. Awesome. Awesome. So let's let's jump right into it. Our grand final over at the Adelaide over has come. It has gone. And unfortunately, as we kind of talked before I went into it, the Adelaide Crows get their third premiership of five grand finals that they have been to. What an incredible, incredible run. Really quick, Fee. I mean, how amazing is this run? I mean, do we have a dynasty here? Or are we jumping to conclusions a little bit with the upcoming expansion, potentially seeing some of these players jump over to port? I was just thinking about um, when Meryl Streep won her umpteenth Oscar and she got up, she was very good humored about it. She went, I know what you're all thinking. Oh, sorry, that was a terrible microphone glitch um i know what you're all thinking why her why her not again and then she said something like oh shut up <laughs> so that, that is kind of how i feel about it like, it's like oh why why did freo have to get beat why why did melbourne have to get beaten um not to take anything away from their excellence they are they are an elite squad the uh, the you know the best of the best the top gun top gun crew uh and they should should be admired and yes they definitely did earn um uh, that grand final and they they definitely have earned their place at the top and they are the only undisturbed team really it needs to be said so it will be interesting to see a lot of people are afraid a, a lot of um adelaide supporters seem to be saying oh my god this isn't fair and the rest of us are saying tell us about it it's happened to every other club <laughs> um and there's a real um fear for the quality that people are genuinely worried that the quality might drop because the, the the talent will be dispersed. I think it's the start of a really balanced, fair um, competition. And I'm really interested to see how that develops. Uh, but all all praise and all um, congratulations to Adelaide because they definitely deserved, they definitely won, um, deserved to win. And, um, you know, damn it, I, I really wanted Melbourne to win. <laughs> I, I openly have to say this is that I, I tipped Adelaide, but I, I was I was I was barracking for Melbourne as much as possible. I knew this was this was going to be a difficult game because the Crows have just been kind of that 
team of destiny. In fact, I said it when the Duggies won, when the Duggies beat the Crows, I said, if I'm the rest of the competition, I'm yelling at the dogs because I think that focused the Crows for the rest of the season. And you could kind of see a little light switch on that Adelaide Crows team ever since that loss to the dogs that I think really kind of changed how they played footy. Now, there were two teams in the grand final, not just one. And since Ali, you are our Melbourne expert, our, our Melbourne fan, Give us some of the, the, the positive lights. I, I know, it, yes, it's, it's a tough loss, but I'm going to give it. Daisy was very, very gracious in defeat. She brought up a lot of great things, but I, was, but I know there's got to be some positive lights. Who are some of the players that you can take on a lot of positives to after a, a grand final defeat that some people would say you just bit played one of the best teams that might have played at least so far over the first six seasons? It's, it was never going to be easy when you have to come up against a state side and a state side that's getting better every year because South Australian draft pool is getting better every year. But in terms of the Ds, I do have to give a shout out to Gabby Colvin, who I must say is criminally underrated. Um, and she she was brilliant in the grand final. One, definitely in contention for best on ground if if we won, but her intercept work, her defensive work, her rebounds out of defensive 50 were just, were just brilliant. And although things kind of fell apart as they went forward, she was definitely a shining light in what was a really tough afternoon. Uh, and then I know Goldrick was another one I thought absolutely yeah. played fantastic. She was absolutely everywhere. And then to see the YouTube video where I think her parents came over from Ireland was absolutely mm. just fantastic. It was great to see that. And, and uh, so I thought it was a, a good story for her to be able to have such a good game in front of her parents. I know it, it stinks to lose and that was a tough, tough game, but, but a great performance by her. So let's, Let's kind of go really, really quickly to a little bit of a, of a season review. I, I know the grand final, it, it's still still fresh in our minds. We still talked about it, but we, we have a full season to go with. Season six has come. It has gone. And there was, there was a lot of expectations and a lot of things, and I, I kind of came into this season. So I'm going to ask you both. For, we'll start with you, Fee. Give us your, your biggest surprise of the season, your biggest disappointment, and a team you're really looking forward to going into next season that is not an expansion team? Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm just writing this down because that, that's a lot to remember. My biggest surprise. Um, this, might, this might be surprising. I was actually surprised that Alan McConnell Announce his retirement. I think that I think that a lot of people thought it was inevitable, but I felt um, because we've spoken to almost all of the Giants players. Sorry, that's not true. We try to get Giants players every week, but they're often not available. We've made contact, but we haven't been able to get them on the show. Um, but we do know quite a few players, and they all they all speak about um, Alan in such positive terms. And it's a real it's a real uh the term is often overused but it's a real family relationship that they have there and they um and and uh, i remember it was katie loin who was saying that when they perform poorly he takes it very personally so and, and all of that you could say yes that's just normal kind of coach you know the, the players are, are invested the coach is invested and they all play for one another but i just got this sense that it was a it was another step further so I was um whilst I'm sure it could be said yes he's reached the end of perhaps uh his his run with Giants um I know they're all really they'll all be really sorry to see him go and it's going to be really tough to move on so yeah that was my surprise which may not be surprising at all to everyone else but it was surprising to me mm -hmm. <laughs> biggest disappointment um I think that Frio could have done better. I don't know. I'm dreaming, but I really, I was, I was, uh, I was actually in the, uh, without going too much into my illness, I was in, in the stage of my, um, my treatment just after my latest um, chemo um, round. And so I have to rest. And that weekend was 
was the two rescheduled um, preliminary finals. And so my mum was was um, was at my place and just making sure I was okay. And I was screaming at the TV, no, don't give it to her. Usually that was um, uh, Aaron Phillips. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, you want to let her get the for. I really felt because um, Freo for years has said, oh, we haven't had a good enough run. And then, you know, with the... Um, with the conference when they actually admitted it, it was a conference as opposed to now that it still is conferences, but they're just pretending it's not. Um, Frio said, oh, we just didn't get a good enough run. We, ne- we didn't get a chance. And it, it was unfair the way the way our, um, our, our um, what do you call it? Our, um, see, this is what happened. It's chemo brain. <laughs> their, their schedule. There's another mm. term for it. I can't think of it. You know. Fixture. So, um sorry fixture fixture thank you donnie that's right no problem. um so i felt as if this was their opportunity and they just didn't get there and um i i so wanted that for them so that was that was my disappointment so you could almost say it was my disappointment that that adelaide went all the way through but that wouldn't be a very nice way to, way to put it um yeah i I've, i wanted more from frio and um and so that was my disappointment. And so a non-expansion side, you want my thoughts on a non-expansion side? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm hoping that the the disappointment of losing the grand final will, uh, oh, sorry, I'll say that again, being beaten at the grand final will be the extra push that Melbourne needs to come forward next season i might be stealing some of ali collett's uh, thunder there so i apologize if that's the case um, um but uh i know that uh adelaide's was so badly stung last year when they were beaten by brisbane that when they met them in this season i was still going for brisbane and everyone else said you dream and fee because Adelaide were like, we're going to get you. And so I, I just hope that, um, yeah, Melbourne comes back hard and strong next season. Okay. Ali? Um, I guess my biggest surprise and disappointment is kind of the same thing, and I'm going to say okay. Collingwood. Because okay. I watched them in that practice match the start of the year and thinking, they're a good side here. Got Sabrina, got Imogen Barnett. That's going to be one hell of a dangerous forward line. And then they couldn't win interstate. So got bundled out in that qualifying final, semi final, whatever you want to call it. I don't even know what the, to call it anymore. Um, so, yeah, I I had them pegged as, as a potential grand finalist. But yeah. Um, in terms of team excited for next season, <laughs> as much as I do want to say the days, I probably should say someone else. <laughs> it's up to you. Um, I, I have no preference. If you want to say the D's, say the D's. It's it's. There's no way um, to argue that they're they're definitely a team that I think if they can keep everybody together, they're they're there. Especially if the rumors are if the rumors and things go true that Port may get a few of Adelaide stars, it's going to split, it's going to split that Crows team apart a little bit, which is going to help out. The biggest question will be is how to Brisbane, how to Melbourne, how to Frio handle this off season. Do they, do they lose anybody to expansion, different things like that. So I, I, you're, you're not, you're not wrong there. Personally, I don't, as much as like, I don't know what the rules are with expansion, but Nobody to... does, Ali. Nobody <laughs> does. <laughs> oh boy. Um, but yeah, I, talking to some talking to some of the days girls, I don't reckon any of the best 22 will leave. I reckon like Brenna Tarrant has already said she's going to go back to Sydney. That doesn't surprise me. One of the biggest victims of our list depth has been your Brenna Tarrants, mm-hmm. your Alison Browns, your Jackie Parries. So if they leave. It won't surprise me. But if someone in our best 22 leaves, now that will surprise me. Mm-hmm. All right. So let, let me let me hop in here. I'm, I'm going to throw out a couple of them. Biggest surprise, but it didn't surprise me, and that's Gold Coast. 
I think Gold Coast really, they benefited from getting Sarah Perkins back. I think Sarah Perkins' ACL injury the previous season really hurt that young Gold Coast team. And having her back for an entire season, you saw its impact. Tara Bohanna had a hell of a season. Yes, you get Charlie Robottom. Charlie Robottom is an incredible player. But you still have to have that ability to kick goals. And the way Perko helped out that young forward line, and they really, really played well. There was a time... I was thinking in several of my podcasts, this is a team that can nip into the finals if Collingwood falls apart. And and Collingwood did everything they could to do it, not intentionally. But then Gold Coast kind of had a couple of games where they just were not sharp. That Brisbane game was absolutely horrible for them. And and unfortunately, it really, really bit them. Um, When it comes to biggest disappointment, my biggest disappointment is not because of what they did, but what they didn't do. And that was Carlton. Because I look at their I look at their list at the start of the season. You have Georgia G, you have Maddie Prasparkas, you have Mimi, you knew Mimi Hill was going to come back from her ACL injury, but you didn't know what you were going to get. You had your all Australian Ruckman in, in, in Bree Moody. You had a lot of talent there. You've got Darcy Vessio up front. You've got a lot of talent, a lot of ability. And there were games, it did not show that this was a team with those type of big names on its list. Like I numerous times in many podcasts go, I don't know what to make of Carlton. I really, really don't like they confused me because if I look at your list on paper, you should beat some of the teams that they were losing to. So it was very, very, they were very much a team that just had me befuddled. Now we'll we'll talk about it just here in just the tiniest bit, how that, that team has been thrown for a loop a a lot over the, over these last couple of weeks. And then the team I'm looking forward to the most has changed because you would have asked me four weeks ago, I'd have said the Western Bulldogs. I said the Western Bulldogs hands down because they have all that young talent, a ton of experience, but now Bonnie too good is gone. It sounds like Izzy Huntington's gone. Yes. You probably would not have had her for this season, but they're lo- they're, they've lost a couple of really key forwards. How are they going to make that up? I mean, Nell Moore Stalton came in this year, played really, really well for them. But is she, is he Huntington? Is she Bonnie too good? Unfortunately, all due respect to Nell Moore Stalton, she's not. So we're really going to have to see, do the doggies try to get creative and try to get a full forward into that team to kind of balance out the loss of Bonnie too good? Actually, the team that I'm really looking forward to the most because I want to see a bounce back, but I'm worried it may not happen, and that's the Richmond Tigers. I think Harriet Cordner's injury early in the season hammered this team because they could not figure out how to get their structure defensively once she went down. And once that happened, yes, Mon Conti is incredible. Yes, Brennan is incredible. Yes, uh, you have all that talent with Ellie McKenzie there. You have... The, the, the twin you have the Hosking twins, but it just wasn't working because if it went into their defensive zone, it wasn't coming out because they didn't have that stabilizer in Harriet Cordner back there. They had some players come on later on in the season, but it just wasn't the same. So I'm looking forward to them. I want to see, can they open this off season kind of stabilize that back line? Because unfortunately, again, it's not confirmed, but everybody's kind of talking like it is that August is our restart. Harriet Cordner will not be back. So how do they handle that one? So it, I'm very, very fascinated to see the Duggies, the Duggies and the Richmond Tigers are the two teams I'm looking forward to because I want to see how they handle this off season. So the reason that I asked that question that I did was, is because we've got four new teams coming in to this off season and they're already making some moves, some less than others. Port Adelaide, I'm talking about you. Great hire with Lauren Arnell, but when's your first player? When's your first player? Can't wait for that. I got I got to say that a tiny bit. So really, the really rumors cool. abound, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> they are. So so I got to ask, uh, so I got to ask both of you. Um, so we've already seen some expansion teams pick up some named players, some, some big name players, some less so. Who's your biggest surprise? Who is your biggest surprise that has found themselves in new colors going into this off season, going into this new season that has joined an expansion club? Because I'll go, I'll go first. Bonnie too good surprised me. I, I will not, I will not even lie. Bonnie too good going to Essendon surprised me. 
I thought she had a really good deal there. She wasn't going to have to worry about Izzy Huntington. She could be the top. She could be, pardon my pun here, the top dog at the Western Bull at the Western Bulldogs this year. And she decides to don the sash and go down to Essendon. So I, that one kind of shocked me a little bit. Maddie Persparkus, Georgia G, not so much. I knew Maddie Persparkus wasn't was an Essendon supporter. That really didn't surprise me. And I've heard Georgia G is very good friends with Maddie Persparkus. So that one didn't shock me. But Bonnie Too Good kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, I would have said Bonnie as well because we all know the Press Barkers sisters are from that neck of Melbourne and they're big Essendon supporters. Georgia G, we've heard we've heard about Carton and all their troubles. I I won't go into that, but yeah, Bonnie surprised me because the dogs this year, it felt like if they hadn't had that that COVID outbreak, things mm-hmm. could have been very different. And yeah, with no Huntington there next year, presume, presuming that trade goes through, yeah, Bonnie would have been that number one forward, presumably. So I don't know what's what's happened there. I've I've heard some things about the Bulldogs. Nothing's been what I, what I've been told hasn't been confirmed. But yeah, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Fee, Fee, what one shocked you? I don't have a shocking one so much as one that I'm very excited about. Is that going to derail a question down the track, Donnie? No, no, that's fine. Go on ahead. I'm just so excited that uh, that Maddie Collier is coming home to Sydney. Uh, I mean, she's actually from the South Coast, which is not Sydney. <clears throat> and uh, she, is, she is a player who Coach Kiwi coached when she was a very young Player. So I think she was 16, maybe, in her South Coast side, the Southern, not Southern Saints, the, um, it doesn't really matter what they were called. I can picture their uniform. I just can't remember their name. Chemo brain. Mm-hmm. That's going to be my excuse for everything. But so she has been at, she was at Giants um, and she, then she went to West Coast um, for, by her own uh, at her own words, her own comments, she said that she's done a lot of growing up over there. So I feel I feel like it's a real coming home for her. She's also talking about what she does after football. So I'm not sure how many, I don't know how long her contract is and with Swans and I, I don't know how long she expects to play football after this, after next season. But I'm just, I just think it's a, it's right and good that, that Maddie is coming home in the same way that it was right and good that Taylor Harris finally found a home and it was with Melbourne. That's a player, you know, it, it was looking really scary. Like she might, might not find a team at one point when she did, I was thrilled because she's a player who should play. And Maddie is a player who should be uh, happy in her team and 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 close to home. And so coming back to Sydney is a really good thing. Uh, that's great to hear. Okay, I gotta I gotta ask this, Ali. I, I heard this. I heard this brought up with somebody. I can't remember who brought it up, and and I, I want to hear your reaction to it. I was told. I was heard from a podcaster. They said if Sydney really wanted to splash something. They should go after Taylor Harris, a lot like Warwick Kappa back in the early days and get that marquee guy, almost like Buddy Franklin a little bit nowadays. Thoughts on that? Because honestly, in my personal opinion, I think Taylor has found a perfect spot for her. She doesn't have to be the superstar. She's got Daisy Pierce there. She's got a lot of talent around here. I think she's found the perfect place for her. And and as much as I I am a Sydney supporter and diehard Sydney supporter, if you can't tell on the YouTube video by the indigenous Gersey over my right shoulder, I, I, I don't, I would love to have Taylor there, but I just, I don't think it would be the best move for her. I think it would be a regression than, than a progression in in my personal opinion. So what are your thoughts on that, Allie? Uh, (laughs) The short version of my answer is she's not going anywhere. She is so happy at the days. I've been lucky enough to chat to her a couple of times and she she has definitely found her home. She's she's so happy at the days. But I I like the thing you're trying to get someone big to Sydney. But I personally think Scott Gowns will ta- target some of North's key players. I don't know if it'll be an Ashwoodell or someone of her calibration because you can only have certain a certain number of marquee players at every club. I don't know what that number is, maybe two or something like that. So if you've got someone like <laughs> like your like your Ashradales who is going to be fighting for marquee status with like your Emmy Cardis, your Emmy Kings, and so forth, 
and she's got that relationship with Scott Gowans already, why not try and entice her up north to Sydney and uh, get the marquee money and be reunited with the coach that gave her her AFLW start? Definitely there. I know that at one time the Ash Riddell was being talked about, but I think that's been knocked back. So I, I'm not really sure what we'll really have to see as a diehard Swan fan. There's, there's one move that still hasn't happened. I want to see, and I, and I hate rating GWS, but I'd love to see Jess Doyle back in, in the Swans, especially with her connection with the, the Swans Academy. I haven't seen anything yet. I'm hoping it still happens just because I, I think it would be perfect. But again, it's, it's a little bit of pie in the sky there, but I, I I'm thoroughly looking forward to it. Um, Seeing Ali Morfitt and Beck, Beck Privatelli both move over from the from the Giants, I think are, are good quality moves for the Swans um, that I'm looking forward to see kind of how they build because it has been a little bit of experience and some young talent. So we'll really have to see how that goes. But I'm going to say it, Essendon kind of scare me if they can build a decent list because you've got Bonnie too good up front, Georgia G and Maddie Prasparkis. I mean, of, of the expansion clubs right now, the most dangerous just right now of what we've heard has to be the Essendon Bombers. Definitely. And you've got George and Nance going in there already. Plus, if you look at their BFLW side, you've got that forward line of Mira Clifford, Renee Tierney, Federica Fru, Cecilia McIntosh, if she wants another go, but it doesn't sound like she's thinking AFLW again. And then you've got that midfield uh, who over Zanchetta, Radford, and then you've got Danny Marshall in defence, who I seriously hope Essendon didn't pick up, but that's a rant for another time. So you've got all that talent in that VFLW side that, that you could easily pick up. So, yeah, I'd, I'd be worried, worried as an opposition supporter about Essendon already, even though they've got, what, five signings. Mm-hmm. Well, and the other one's Port, because we just we don't know what what – Adelaide Crows, they're going to pick off and, and what they aren't. I mean, I've, I've heard everything from Hatchard, Hatchard, uh, Phillips, and a couple others are all moving over to it's only Phillips and then the rest of it. Will, again, it's what we'll have to see I'm, how Lauren Arnell and their, and their list management comes up. I, I don't know. Uh, it, it'll be fascinating. I, I agree with you. I, I don't know the rules when it comes to expansion. I, I, I somewhat wish, and I think it's the issue with being a state competition, with being kind of the state draft only, so that I think does kind of hinder the competition. Because I know with at least expansion over here is you can protect a certain amount of players and then the rest of them are open to be able to be picked, but they have an, what they call an expansion draft over here. But that's nationally and professional, which really can't, you can't do that there so it's it's kind of a weird little thing so i'm i'm learning just as much as you ladies are so i'm i'm, I'm super excited and I, and I don't want to go back into the to the talk but we still haven't heard any confirmation of when the season starts next year but everything i keep hearing is august i mean do i should we feel bad that i'm almost kind of assuming aflw season seven is going to start in august I think that's a fair assumption. And that, and so that then means a whole lot of, as you, you, you sort of mentioned earlier, a whole lot of players are just knocked out. So that includes um, Bree Davey, that includes, um, she's the first one that comes to mind actually, but there, there are so many players who are just going to be completely knocked out for this season. Um, there, are, there are so many ACLs. I haven't actually sort of, tallied them up but I wonder how I wonder how that's actually going to balance the um the season I I wonder who's going to be disadvantaged or if that's actually going to level the playing field a little bit (laughs) Collingwood gets hit the hardest because both both Brooke Benici and Bree Davey yes, are out Brooke, next year. So that's that's a Brit, massive Brit hit Benici, for Colin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Brit, Brit Benici and Bree Davey. So that's two of your top midfielders. Harriet Cordner for the Rich for the Richmond Tigers would be out. So like I kind of kind of said, I, I don't know how that goes. The rest of them, I believe there's one at the Bulldogs was a younger player who was 19 that got an ACL. Um I, I I didn't sit there and write down the list, but I, I agree. It's like, it's these long-term injuries that, that could cost them. And then 
I mean, as we had kind of discussed, Ali in our pre in our pre grand final, the Irish players. Are we going to yeah. lose all of them? Because that's there's list spots there that will then have to be filled if the Irish players decide not to come back. I mean, Cora, Cora Staunton, Brid Stack, Sinead Goldrick, I mean, uh, so many Irish players that make impacts on the teams that they play for. That's another thing that I think list managers, it's going to be a headache because if they can't play, there's 14, 15 list spots that then have to be filled with potentially 18, 19, 19 year old girls, which as I've also heard the discussions, they're going through VCEs in their final exams. So how are they going to be able to step up and play footy next year? So there's just a ton of headaches. And unfortunately we're, they're going to have to wade through this year unless something changes, which I just don't see it happening. Unfortunately. Kind of feels like this hasn't been thought through very well because there are so many issues. And yet, like, I. And oh, how very day, AFLW. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, an August start date in the future makes sense. August 2022, agree. not so much. And what annoys me is when you're moving the start date. You'd think the players would be the first stakeholders you talk to, right? In a common sense world, which unfortunately we don't live in. They haven't been consulted. I've been lucky enough to chat to a few of the D's girls and yeah, they haven't been consulted. I'm like, surely in, I know the AFL doesn't, doesn't uh, do it in common, work in common sense, but oh, it just annoys me. Like, anyway, I could rant about that all day, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I don't know if you saw it, V, but a Ali came in for the grand final preview and myself and Brian Barris, the USAFL media manager, we were going off. I mean, we were literally, she sat there and just smiled the entire time because she had two Americans, two men literally eviscerating how horrible this thing has been managed. And, and I, and I've said numerous times, and I remember Pete talking about it on your podcast is I said, it, it's a poison pill, no matter what you take, but this really just seems like they're going, well, we want to, we want to get there. We just want to get there. And we're just going to shove it to the front and go, whatever happens, be damned. And I think that's the one thing that really has not been done very well that I think there has been very little communication. There has been very little trying to, there's been little give by the AFL on anything. Like it has not been, well, well can we, can we push this back to 2023, start 2022 in, in January or December to where we can let these girls rest, let these ACL girls hopefully get back in time for the next season. And then uh, slowly let these ladies get their, schedules for their regular work adjusted to where it's not going to cost them financially or their job personally, AKA Jess Wushner, who now has to leave AFLW because if she wants to work, she can't play. So I, I, I am worried. We are going to lose not only Irish players, we're going to lose young players. We're going to lose some of the older players who are going to go, you know what stuff this, I need to work. You're not paying me enough. Bye. And, and that's what I worry about it, it, and because I have jumped headfirst into the pool that is AFLW. I love the sport. I understand all the, I understand all the arguments of expansion. You're going to dilute, you're going to dilute it first, but once more and more of these 18 year olds who have been playing footy their entire lives come in, it will grow. And the other thing is if you pay them more and you let them be full-time athletes, the sport will get better. You got to do that. I understand it's going to take some pain to get that to happen, but it's worth it in the long run. It is an investment in the sport in the long run. Look at youth girls leagues. They have exploded throughout the country. You will have the talent. You have to let it get there. And I think that's the most frustrating part about this whole thing. So Let's not dive into that one because that is, that is going to be eaten up and absolutely talked about from now until, unfortunately, it sounds like August. So, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So it's going to be a fun, short, quick 
off season, unfortunately. So I think that is going to do it for our chat. A little bit of everything, a nice little, nice little ending to our season this year. Again, congratulations to the Adelaide Crows. I, I know we're, we're, we were all, we were all rooting. We were all cheering for those D's, but unfortunately they just fell a tiny bit short. So Ali Fee, again, thank you so much for joining me this year. And really quickly, before I end this episode, to all of my co-hosts that have worked with me this season, I want to thank you personally. You have been wonderful to work with. It has been amazing to chat with you. I love being able to talk about AFLW. It has been such a great learning experience for me to talk with people with like Fee and Ali and Emma and Marnie Vinyl. You ladies are amazing. What you guys are doing is awesome. This has been a tough year for female journals and for females in sporting. And I'm doing the best that I can to try to be a supportive person in this environment. So Ali, thank you very much for everything that you do at rookie me. Rookie me central. Thank you. I appreciate your work. I, I know Pete Williams very, very well. He's a good friend of mine. And I love your guys' work. Your website is absolutely fantastic. For somebody that does not live in Australia, that is a very helpful thing for me to get ready for the drafts, both for the men's and the women's competition. Fee, your podcast and the ladies up there at the Coat Hanger podcast are absolutely fantastic. Being able to talk with Coach Kiwi, talk with Tracy Kick, to talk with Emma and to talk with you has been fantastic. I have enjoyed this season so much. I appreciate everything that you guys have done. And to Marnie and to everybody back there that I chat with, thank you again so much. You have made this podcast so much fun for me this season. I cannot wait to work with you again next year. So this will be me signing off for the AFLW section in the Donnie's Disposals. I have some awesome, awesome podcasts. I have a few other female journals who I've been talking with, who I'd love to be able to talk with during the AFLW off season. Yes, I'm doing the men's competition, but I want to keep the AFLW in the loop. And if you're listening to this and have any contacts with any AFLW players, please send them my way to my Twitter, my Instagram, or my Facebook. I would love to be able to talk with them. I had a lovely chat with Daisy Bateman a little over a year ago. She's an incredible young lady, an incredible footballer, and I would like to find more. So if you have that opportunity, and the same thing for Fee Alley, if you guys know any AFLW players that would be interested in chatting to an American about their about their footy journey, I would love for you to uh, send them my way. So that will do it for our episode today. We'll be back with AFLW maybe in August. We'll have to see. And um, we will see you again very, very soon.